The neurological examination of the pediatric patient must be couched in the context of neurodevelopmental milestones. What one would normally expect from a newborn is certainly different than what one would expect from a two-month-old, six-month-old, or 12-month-old. Assessing developmental milestones and the attainment of those developmental milestones is an essential part of the pediatric neuro exam. When there are problems with the nervous system, oftentimes they are manifested by a delay in the attainment of those developmental milestones or an abnormal pattern in attaining those developmental milestones. In assessing the child's developmental level, the examiner must know the age when key social, motor, and language skills are normally acquired. There are several screening tools that can be useful for, uh, for this, such as the Denver Developmental Screening Test Edition 2. There are several key principles of neurodevelopment to keep in mind. First, the development of motor control proceeds in a head-to-toe fashion. The baby first develops head, then trunk control for sitting, and finally controls the lower extremities for walking. Second, primitive reflexes such as the Moreau, grasp, and gallant are normally present in the term infant and diminish over the next four to six months of life. The postural reflexes, such as the positive support reflex, Landau, lateral propping, and parachute, emerge at the three to eight month age. Persistence of primitive reflexes and the lack of development of the postural reflexes are the hallmark of an upper motor neuron abnormality in the infant. Another very important part of assessing brain development is measuring the growth of the brain. This is accomplished by measuring the head circumference, which is an accurate reflection of brain size. The brain grows to 80% of its adult volume during the first two years of life, so many neurological diseases that occur early in life will impact the growth of the brain. A small head, which is microcephaly, or a large head, which can be caused by macrocephaly or by hydrocephalus, can be key findings in explaining the neurological abnormalities of a child. It is essential to plot head circumference on a standardized head growth chart, such as the Nell House chart. Because the infant and the child are unable to fully cooperate for the standard neurological examination, the examination must be tailored to the child and their developmental level and temperament. The first part of the examination is to stop, look, and listen. You will learn more about the child's neurological, neuro, neurological status by initial hands-off careful observation than you will by forcing the child to conform to your pattern of performing the neurological examination. By watching the baby's spontaneous activity, you can determine a great deal about their mental status, cranial nerve, coordination, and motor status. The second part of the examination is the hands-on part, which extends and further clarifies your initial observations. For this part of the examination, make it into a game that engages the child's curiosity and imagination. The exam is less threatening and the child much more cooperative when toys are used and the examination tools are turned into play objects. For example, the use of finger puppets for coordination testing and turning the reflex hammer into an imaginary horse when testing deep tendon reflexes. The third and last part of the examination are all those things that are the most threatening and unsettling for the child, such as undressing the child for a more complete exam, looking at the fundus with an ophthalmoscope, using the otoscope, testing the gag reflex, or measuring the head circumference. In the neurological assessment of the child, don't neglect the general physical examination. Some of the parts of the general examination that are particularly important to note are the following. Somatic growth. Measure height and weight and compare percentiles with head circumference. Search for dysmorphic features. Carefully study the face, especially the mid-face, there is the old adage that the face reflects the brain because anomalies of the mid-face are often associated with underlying brain malformations. Eye examination. Children are often uncooperative and it's hard to get a good look at the fundus, 
but patience and perseverance pays off. The retina is said to be the window of the brain, and the retinal examination can give valuable information for the neurological assessment. Skin search. A careful, complete skin search is important. Look for the stigmata of the neurocutaneous syndromes, such as cafe au lait or ash leaf lesions. Abdomen. Palpate for visceromegaly, which can indicate the presence of one of the storage diseases. Spine. Look for scoliosis in any sacral anomalies.